Hey, fifth graders, how's it going? It's good to see you guys. Well, rather, you guys can see me, I can't see you. But um, I appreciate your patience with this, friends. Uh, this is how it's going to be for the remaining two and a half weeks if you're with either Ms. Connell or Ms. Wachillis. Uh, you guys will get this recorded video from me um, as your drama lesson for the last two and a half weeks of first quarter. And uh, we will do our best to facilitate a lesson to you guys uh, within this virtual environment. All right, so let's get started. All right, my friends. So you may remember I had said on Friday that we were going to move into a new lesson because our character uh, units, while it was going very well, um, cannot transition seamlessly as virtually um, as other ones can. So. You all did great work though on your character exercises. If we didn't get to turn yours into a story, don't fret because I know you did the work and I know it's there. So that participation grade is safe for you guys if you did the work. So fear not. Now, moving forward, we have had quite a journey going through drama class. We have had a basic introduction to the building blocks of drama. We have had a very fun unit on improv where we've, we have learned to make things up on the fly, to sort of go with the flow based on one idea. And now we have had this wonderful unit where you guys create your own characters. And by giving your characters background information and giving them your own story, you are now ready to take pre-existing scenes and monologues and you are ready to analyze those yourself based on all the knowledge you gain from your characters. So our unit going forward, and this should put us through to the end of the quarter, is going to be called Scene Analysis. So what we'll do is, over the course of this week and uh, next week, possibly the final week, we will go ahead and take scenes they, or, or monologues, and we will break them down and we will try to figure out how we are going to, how the characters, you know, what their backstories are, what do they want, where do we think they're going, and we'll have no knowledge of the whole story where they came from. What I want you guys to do, based on everything you've learned, is to take the characters in each scene or monologue and figure out amongst yourselves where you think they are, where you think they're going, what a secret might be that they have. And there will be some other elements that we will analyze and take a look at that, that will possibly help us drive a scene forward. All right? So what we want to talk about with scene analysis is three very specific things. Now remember, with characters, we have talked about the way a character moves, the way a character sounds, the way they stand and sit, their posture, the way they talk, do they move their hands, do they have gestures, and is there something spe special about their voice, um, an intonation, if you will. So you guys, when you did your characters, we broke all that down very, very specifically. So now, um, we also had the questions, right? We had... What is your name, right? Where do you live? What do you do for a living? What is your ultimate dream? And then last but not least, a big secret. So not only will we go ahead and figure out all of those aspects of each character again, we will also try to figure out based on what they've said, where the story is going to take them. So this is, the even, this is the best part right here. We get to break down a story. We get to make predictions, a hypothesis, if you will, for certain stories and break down the very core of the structure of a story. All right? I can't wait. So there are three things that we need to look for when we do a scene. And for the first part of this class, what I want to do is break down succinctly what those three parts are. So depending on whether you have a monologue or a scene, right, you will have either one or more characters 
to talk about or deal with. So let's just review what a mono, before we start with the three parts actually, let's go ahead and review what a monologue and a scene are, real fast. There we go. So let's start with a monologue. Pull the board up a little closer for you guys. All right, so a monologue. Now a monologue, you guys have done those before. When we first started this class, when we had our basic introduction to drama, you all told me stories that were about yourself. It was either a scary story, an embarrassing moment, when somebody did something nice for you, or a cool place you went and visited, you had all these different ideas about what sort of story you could tell. And monologues, like we said, are when you take a story and you deliver it to a group of people. So if you're reading a scene from a play or a movie, a monologue is when one person delivers something either out to the audience, if it's a play, or if it is uh, in a movie, it would be something that someone delivers off camera, and the, but it just shows that one actor, and they're saying something specifically to a group of people, even though they can't be seen. And for those of my friends, I know I had a lot of people in this class in particular who were in Phantom Tollbooth with me last year. We'll just review that again. So there was a monologue in Phantom Tollbooth when um, one of our middle schoolers, Jasmine Serta, who played uh, the dog, Tak, who was one of the main characters, she told another character, the boy named Milo, about the whole story of the world that they lived in, right? Because Milo was a visitor to this magical place. So Tak told the story while other characters acted out what happened in the background. But when Tak was talking to the audience and telling the story, she was giving a monologue. So there was a group of words, a set of paragraphs that she had to deliver. So it is a chunk of dialogue delivered out to an audience. All right, now our first, our very first um, the very first things we'll analyze in this uh, unit will not be scenes, they will be monologues. So that will be what we do first. We'll keep it simple, and then we'll move on to bigger scenes as we go along. All right? So that is a monologue. All right? So you can go ahead and take time if you want to write this down. I will also have these definitions posted on Schoology for you guys so you can see those um, specifically. I will make those copies for you, All right? All right, and we also have a scene. Let me get rid of this. Like I said, don't worry. I will post this on Schoology again for you all to see. So let me write scene real quick. Scene. So a scene is a chunk of a play or a movie so that takes place in one specific area that takes place between two or more people. So a scene basically is, it sort of chronicles a whole journey from beginning to end in one location. Every character has something they want or need and by the end of the scene, it is always their hope that they get what they want. Every character tries to get what they want. So let me just go ahead and I will write that down for you. And I will also make sure that I have, sorry guys, our words here. All right, so scene. So, so it is a... All 
All right. So, once again, a scene is a chunk of dialogue. Let me write that down. Location. Sorry, guys. Wrote wrong. Chunk of dialogue. There we go. A chunk of dialogue. Let's get two more characters in specific. So there we go. So a scene is essentially a chunk of dialogue from a play or a movie that involves two or more characters in a specific location. And like I said, once we get past some monologue work, we will go ahead and delve into, sorry guys, delve into different scenes, right? And we will go ahead and break down what each character wants, why they want it, and what they need to do to make it happen. Very much like the stories that we just reviewed with your characters. All right, so now that we know the difference between a monologue and a scene, let's go ahead and we will break down what three things we most want to look for in every single monologue or scene. All right, so, the first thing we want, let me back this up a little bit, sorry guys. Okay. The first thing we want is, write this down. Okay. The first thing we want, number one, is what is called a character journey. I'll bring this a little closer again. So where is the character trying to go in the scene with what they're saying? They're obviously staying in one place. They don't want to go to some lo other location. But the journey of the whole character essentially boils down to what do they want and what do they need to do to get it. So I'll write that down. What do they want number two what do they need to do to get all right so those are the two most important questions so that is what we will think about the most when we go through this exercise. And most characters, it's pretty specific what they want. You will find nine times out of 10 that they usually know what they need to go, but things will stand in their way, right? So where the character is and what the character wants as far as their motivation, right, is different at the end of the scene. So, and that's a third thing too. What do they want? What do they need to get it? What, sorry guys, what is motivating them? Yeah. Now this question for us, at least at first, will be tough to figure out because like I said, for the purposes of us brainstorming, we are going into all of these scenes cold. And by that I mean we have no prior knowledge of the plays we are doing. So what we are essentially doing is trying to figure these out based on what little info we have. I know I've said that before, but I figure it would be easy. So this is number one. What do they want? What do they need to do to get it? And what is motivating them? And much like our little stories, we will also encounter a problem, a solution, and a resolution. And when we thought of the end of all your stories, this will usually happen throughout a scene as well. There will be a problem, we will find a way to solve it, and the resolution is the result of the solution. Because resolution is basically putting two words together. Result and solution. 
So all of these, all four of these, will be what we look for when a character goes on its journey. And once again, if this seems a little confusing, I will put all of this in Schoology so it's easy for you guys to review before we move on to an actual monologue, our actual monologue work on Tuesday. All right, so that's number one. Number two. Number two, a big thing we're looking for in a scene is something called plot. There's a big word here. I'll write this down. Plot progression, right? So being aware of the plot is important for every single person who is an actor, right? So even though, like I said, we won't be using a whole play when we do this, right? But what you guys will do is you will basically try to figure out what is the plot of the entire play based on what little we have seen. This might be a little harder with monologues, so we might not delve into this as much, right? But once a scene, once we start working on scenes, there will definitely be a plot to the story that we will try to figure out based on what little we have seen from every scene. So plot progression, right? We figure out where the plot is going. And an easy way to do this, I'm only, I'm gonna write a couple of words down on the board here, but if you just get a monologue or a scene Something you can do to make this easier on yourself is to break this monologue or the scene into something called beats. I'll write that down. All right, so beats. And beats are basically when you take a scene or a monologue and you draw lines in between certain chunks of words and every time you have a line, that is when you determine when either the plot changes or the overall feelings between one character or two characters change, right? So whenever you feel the entire tone of the, of the player monologue or the entire motivation of every character has changed or shifted, that will be the start of a new beat. And when beats are marked in scripts, it usually means you take a pause in between each chunk of words. So this is something I will show you guys too. When we do our first monologue, we might have time today, I'm not sure, but if we don't, first thing on Tuesday when I read a monologue to you guys, I will go ahead and break this down for you just to see what we can do with this, right? So we have beats, right? And as I read, I will split dialogue up. I will show you how I do it. And we will go ahead and do our best to find out how emotions and motivations shift in a scene together. All right. Let me just double check here. All right. And one of, it's one of the hardest things in an actor to go ahead to think about how things change. So remember, with different beats, let me write that down. Emotions change, motivation, motivation changes, right? And remember, motivation, again, is, let me write that over here, what do you want? Kind of like the question we asked when we were developing our characters, what is their dream, right? So let me move the camera down so you guys can see this, right? Beats, emotions change, motivation changes, and what do you want, right? So think about all three of those things. And once again, I will put this up on Schoology for you guys to see so you can think about all this before we move forward into an actual monologue and or scene. All right.
So there we go. All right, and now the third and final parts. Oops, sorry guys, I need a marker real quick. This one's running dry. Try this one. All right, so we're gonna do blue for this last one. Nice spare color, Mr. Ralph's favorite. Number three. This is a big, big word. Number three is exposition. Exposition is a big thing that occurs in plays, in movies, in small scenes, in big monologues, in small monologues, in big scenes. Exposition, depending on how you go about it, exposition can either be a great thing or it can be a very, very, very bad thing. Exposition is basically dialogue that fills you in on what has either been going on in the past or what is currently going on in a scene. It's meant to just give the audience a brief idea of what either has been going on or what is going on. So it can be tell you about something in the past, tell you about something in the present. Sometimes it tells you about something in the future, but mostly past and present. A little bit of exposition is fine, right? So you'll see certain scenes and monologues where you get a little bit of an idea of who a person is and what's going on. Too much defeats the entire purpose of a scene taking place in the first place. If we're told by one person what's going on for too long, the audience gets bored, right? And we never ever want that. One of the reasons that the Marvel movies are so great is that there's just a little bit of exposition in most of them. Um, I know personally, this is just, I'll give an example, right, a specific example. The first two Thor movies, the first one and then Dark World, at the beginning when Odin is telling everybody the backstory of, you know, either the Dark Elves, right, in, in Dark World, or I believe it is the uh, Frost Giants in the first one, that is exposition. We are being brought up to speed on what is going on. Now, I personally think that in both of those movies is perhaps a little too much exposition, but we have an idea of everything that happened before, before we get the two movies. So that is a perfect example of exposition. And I will go ahead and write that down on the board for you guys. So you have it, right? And let me go ahead and see, right? So it's background information within a story. Right? So like I said, a little bit of background information is just fine, right? It's easy peasy. And then there is, um, but if too much, like I said, can wreck a scene because you're basically being told the story instead of seeing the story. So, a little bit is okay. You will get some background information in certain scenes. Sometimes in plays, there will be uh, what's called a stage direction. For those of you who are in Phantom Tollbooth, you might remember from your scripts, there were lines that were in parentheses, right, that basically said, I'll show you an example, right? So we have, and they were written in italics, which is that funny thing you do on your computer when your words get slanted, all right? So here's what we do. We have, Let's see here, let me make a parentheses, and I'll have talk goes left, right? And it'll look like this. So let me move it down. So the character names are always in capital letters, and where they walk or what they do is always here in parentheses. So that's your typical stage direction. Now, exposition in a stage direction happens when we need to describe a character who has shown up for the first time. So, when Tak comes in, the Phantom Tollbooth, it might say, 
I'll write this real quick. All right. Does everybody have the exposition definition? Go ahead and write it quick if you don't. But don't worry, like I said, all of this is going on Schoology, so you guys do not need to worry. It will all be there for you. Give you about ooh, another 30, 45 seconds. All right, good? Okay, I'm just gonna erase this real quick, friends, so we can. I'll give you an example of an, a stage direction that has exposition. So here we go. So let's start from here. We have talk enters left. Right? Talk enters left. Oops, sorry. Messed that up. I'm not supposed to finish it yet. Talk enters left. Talk is a large spotted dog with a big clock on its tummy. Talk is friendly, but takes his work seriously. All right, so this is kind of big. There we go, you should be able to see all that. All right, so let's take a closer look. All right, so this is talk enters left. So we have our stage direction. Talk is coming in from stage left, right, on, on a stage. Talk is a large spotted dog with a big clock on its tummy. This is, I'm paraphrasing here. Talk is friendly, but takes his work seriously. So you have a little bit of an idea as to how this is going to work, right? You know who Tuck is. You have just enough information to get an idea of how Tuck's character, Tuck's voice, character voice, sounds in your head, right? So that's perfect. That's a great way to start. All right, so once again, friends, with monologues and scenes, we're running short on time, we have... Um, we have, sorry, character journey, who man, character journey, we have plot progression, and we have exposition. So here's what I am going to do. I am going to put one monologue, one simple monologue on Schoology for you guys to look at, right? Just to observe and see as an example of all this we're going to do. On Tuesday, we will talk about that monologue, and we will... I will give a reading of that monologue and we will go ahead and break down the characters based on what little information we have. All right? Okay, my friends, enjoy this. I know this is a lot of information, but you guys have been rock stars and I am confident that we can make this work. So be safe. I love you guys, miss you guys, and hopefully at the end of October, I get to see you in a classroom. All right, take care, friends. See you soon.